Hey guys, Mark Frost of Protect Dog Training. Now we've been talking about the spin collar. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in here in regards to the three-way turnoff. And so far we've dealt with Toffee on the long line and basically bending back into me, right? So it goes on when he hears his name, it goes off when he complies and comes back towards me. Long line stays on him in case I needed some help, but I don't need much. He's kind of turned into a Velcro dog, but we went out to the park in town the other day and because it was a new location, grass, and he was overwhelmed with all these little distractions. I needed to put it up and it started to get to a point where it was, there was a bite involved. We want to avoid that uh, until he really understands the whole concept. We're going to get to a point, we need to raise it up to a point that we give him a consequence and we say, you haven't complied and that's going to be, because he did what he did the other day. The environment overshadowed and, and gave him so much distraction that he just shut off the tingle. Okay, and he's toughing it out. They'll grit their teeth because they're so into what they're into. Think of it like uh, Johnny on the couch, I told you before. He's so into what he's in. Even if his mind picks up on, I'm trying to tell him to come over, I need him to dump the trash, he's going to ignore me because he's so into this. Give me a give me you know what I'm saying? He's not going to comply. So you have to bring it up to a level they respect, but you want to make sure that you get this communication baseboard done in a, in a neutral lab, low threshold, and then make sure that the concepts are conveyed to the dog that you un know that he understands how to win, how to turn off the power, that you've given the the power to the dog and he understands the concept that you're trying to convey to him, right? Or her, whatever the case may be. Every dog is different. They're going to be uh, affected by this differently and receptive to it differently. You're not going to do the same thing with every dog, but Toffee's a great example of a dog that's overwhelmed with distraction and drives and the capping that we've got to do, all kinds of little stuff that we've got to do to get his head in the right place and to become a good working dog, right? So we've got plenty to to go after, we have plenty of potential in Toffee. So we're gonna do the second turnoff. The first one's the long line coming back to me. The next one's gonna be going away from me, going into this crate. That's what I'm gonna use. And then I'll top it off with this table and do the same type of thing. It's basically a hot and cold type of a thing. You're putting on a low threshold stimulation, whatever level that is that he's responding. I've got him up to about a 10 or a 12 today because of his mental attitude. I've already found out where that working threshold is at. It's about seven or eight, nine, he feels it, but how much is gonna be overshadowed with distraction, environment, et cetera, that's where you start to have to lower it and raise it, right? And then we don't wanna to go to a punishment phase until we know that he understands this three-way turnoff, he's got this dialed in, and then we can start increasing criteria, right? Pressure on, pressure off, right? So we've got a lot of things to do. I'm gonna convey it with the, the, the uh, crate right now and see how it goes. I have no idea, we're gonna find out, right? Good. I've got it on a 10. Yep. So let me get this out of the way. And I need to make sure I pin this door open on this crate. Good boy, Tip Top. Good boy, Tip Top. And I'm going to start with back here. I usually guide him all the way in. When I tell him to get in this crate at night, he's being put in all automatically. But I'm going to. Good boy, Chris. See, I did that even if he asked. He knows it that well. Again, we're doing something the dog already knows, okay? Very important, you're not teaching him anything new. You're sending behaviors. All we're trying to do is teach him how he can turn off this stimulation, right? Good boy, Toffee, come on. Good boy, Toffee, get him. Good boy, I've got another 10, good boy. I don't expect him to stay in there, I don't care about that. I'll be in. Up here. Good boy. Good. Awesome. Good. Good. I'm going to say the dog's name. The button's going to go on. So the same type of pattern. And then I'm going to say the word for his, his Q word. I'm not going to let go of it until he gets there. Toffee. Kill him. Nope. Kill him. He feels it. He's a little confused to why it's there. So I've got to help him out. As soon as he touched it, I let it go. Okay? Good boy. Good. He was overshadowed by the stimulation was the distraction. Right? He doesn't have this tied together yet. He doesn't understand what he's supposed to do to turn off the collar. Takes a few a few times, a few sessions. We'll do this a couple, two, three days till we know he has this wired and we, he understands the concept that the, the stimulation is going away when he complies. Right? Yep, good boy, good. Good boy, all right, come on. Good boy, good. I see, good. I had it at a nine, I'm gonna take it down to a 10, I'm gonna take it down to a nine because he told me he was overshadowed from the stimulation of the, the collar was a distraction that made him go, wait a minute, what's going on here? He doesn't understand what I'm asking him to do. 
Then he will, after that time and pattern sets in, and he'll start to learn that when he complies, the stimulation goes away, right? Good, Toffee. Kittle. Good boy. Yay, good boy. Yay, good boy, Toffee. Good boy. Good. That's my boy. That's my boy. Okay, same distance. We'll start doing this farther and farther away. But right now, we're doing it from here, right? Good boy. Toffee. Kennel. Good boy, good, yeah, kennel, good, there you go, good boy, car, good boy, yep, good boy, good dog, all right, good boy. Now I'm going to set a little bit farther back, hopefully you can still see me on screen, I see, good, good, toffee, kennel, good boy, yeah, good boy, good boy, nope, you stay, you stay, good boy, good, good boy. I don't want to bolt out of the camera, so we're going to teach him to stay. Good. Mix it up, right? Mix up. Very important. Yep. Good boy. Good. Yeah. <laughs> That's my boy. That's good, huh? That's good. Yeah. Good boy. That's my boy. All right. Good boy. I see. Good boy. I see. Good. Good boy. Toppy. Kennel. Good boy. Good. There you go. Good. Nope. Kennel. Good boy, Kennel. Good boy, good. I didn't hit the button after that. I did the button on and the button off right when he touched it. After and everything is not a factor yet. Good. Yep. Good boy, good. That's my boy, good. Awesome. Good. There you go. Good. Toppy, Kennel. Nope. Nope. Kennel. Kennel. Good boy, good. There you go, good. When I had to keep the button on, I popped it a couple times, made sure I kept that same concept going, which is the pattern, it doesn't go away until you comply with what I'm asking. Yep, good boy. He's confused right now because he's feeling the stimulation and he's not understanding that that means he's supposed to go. That's why you do three of these. So you can distinctly convey the idea that he is winning when he complies with whatever you're asking him to do. This is the next one. He's already done the first one. He understands that one. He doesn't understand this. So when he feels the tingle, he's, he's confused. We've got to work him through that confusion. Good boy. Good. Good boy, Top. Good boy, Top. Good. Toppy, kennel. Good boy. Good. Right when I had said Toppy, I hit the button. Pattern starts to set in. He starts to do it. But the whole overall idea is getting across to the dog that when he gets to what I want him to do, that he wins, right? Good boy, Toph. Good boy. Good boy. All right, let's go. Come on. Good boy. Good. Good boy. I see. Good boy. Make sure my long line's out of my way. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Toppy. Kennel. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Yep. Good boy. Good. Good boy. Now, there's some concepts that we need to get across to you guys as we build this. And I want to go into it a little bit now, but we'll get to a point where we need to raise the level to get him to, to want to comply when he's overshadowed by distraction, by other things that may take his brain into other things, and he'll grit his teeth when that tingle is there. He'll feel it, but he'll kind of overshadow it because he's more into what he wants to do, just like Johnny on the couch, right? So we've got to bump it up and we've got to teach him that there is a consequence. There will come a time that we start working on that aspect of things. And then he'll really start come trying to complain. But the other big thing that we need to mix into this whole um, communication with the dog is to start doing things like when I start calling him on a come and he's already got it wired on that long line to not hit the button at all. Because now he, he responds because of pattern setting in and everything else. And when no button happens, he starts to figure out, wait a minute, I can avoid that stimulation altogether if I do it right away. That's where you start to get speed. That's where the power of this, this tool comes in so well. Because once the dog starts to understand that, he starts to jump fast. That's where they get speed out of this. Because the dog starts to figure out, if I comply, I will avoid the stimulation altogether. I can get it to not even turn on if I go fast enough. See my point? Right, that's what it's all about. We've got to complain this on the, the low threshold aspects of things to start, right? Good boy, good. Good. Toppy, kill. Good boy, good. That's a boy. Good boy, good. Good boy, good. 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 Yep. 
All right, I'm gonna do one more with food, real heavy, and give him the good, which means duration marker, and I'm gonna go to him with food. Go to him with the food, right? Good, good. That's all training is to me, guys. Patterns, routines, and conveying a thought to the dog of what you're trying to get out of him, right? When you put your head in that frame of mind, you'll start doing a lot better at being a better trainer, right? Just in the end, we have a lot of science, a lot of things that we need to do, but in the real bare bones aspect of everything, what's the bare bones of everything? That I'm conveying a thought to the dog to get him to try to do something that's foreign to him. He has no idea, right? Good boy, good. Now four, we're gonna take it back up to 11. 10. Copy, count. Good boy, good, that's my boy, good. 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 Copy. Yep. Good boy. Good. There you go. I think that's good enough for the first day. We'll keep this one up. We'll start mixing in the long line work, a couple of those, and then we'll come to this, and this will be our primary in regards to our uh, lesson in regards to the stem call and conveying this to the animal. Remember, we're out to get three of them. Make sure it's really set where the dog understands how to turn that stimulation off. Once he gets that, now we start challenging him and the criteria goes up, right? Good boy, good. Good boy. But it would not be fair at all with a tool he doesn't understand and just go to punishment. And that's not what I like to think of. I was talking to a girl yesterday that was out at the, uh, the uh, class that I go to on that police scenario group. And she was telling me she was real nervous about using the stem collar. She wasn't sure about it. And then she finally bit off the bit bullet because she saw my videos on it. She started working with the dog and she started to realize I was talking to her about it and I wanted to make sure I convey the same thing to her that I convey to you guys. And what that means is that you'll, you'll be a lot better served with this tool if you always think of it as a conditioning tool and an extension of your leash. Stop thinking of it as punishment. People always want to go up to a level that they're using it for punishment and you get the least amount of response with that. Sure, but the dog will start to have a problem where he'll start to level up because now it, it, it used to be at an 8 now it's a 12, now it's a 15 or a 20 that he responds to, and he gets used to that, and now you gotta ramp it up to that level, and now that's your working level. We don't want that to happen. We wanna keep this bumper down as much as we can so that we teach the dog with a low stimulation, right? And I see a lot of people out there doing it the wrong way, and they're giving it a, wrong, the, a bad name. Then you see other people that have become masters at this tool. I'm not, like I told her yesterday, I'm not that really good at this. I understand the concepts, but I haven't mastered it. There's some people that can make this thing sing and dance, right? And they really have mastered the tool, and that's when you see these dogs really start to work sharp. But I guarantee you, they understand the full concept of it, what I'm trying to convey to you guys, which is use it as a conditioning tool. Think of it as a conditioning tool and learn how to use the tool properly. And you will be a lot better served, and so will the animal, and so will the whole negativity that's coming from the public, because the public doesn't understand that this is a very powerful tool in the right way, okay? But it's only as good as the person using it. Stop being an idiot. Stop you guys that are out there frying your dogs. Stop that shit. You give it a bad name, you're gonna end up having it to a point where they take our tools away, right? You're not doing the right thing. You're not doing service by the dog. And when you get to that level, will it work? Sure, it'll work. But you know something? You blew it. Because if you would have done it very slow, methodical, and conditioned the animal properly with the tool, you'd get the power of that tool to go, like I said, exponential. It's a three-dimensional tool that has so much ability. You can do so many things with this tool. It's amazing. Because I can step out and touch the dog, right? And I can, from a distance, I can touch that dog, right? And that dog, that's communication. I no longer have just 15 foot of long line. I've got a half a mile of communication, right? You can get real fancy with what you can do with this tool if you really do it the right way and use it as a conditioning tool, not as a punishment tool, all right? Good. Mark Farashi, Pro Tech Dog Training, talking about the stem collar, as I like to call it. Have a good day, guys. Happy New Year's, everybody.